Hello and welcome to the Ipswich Speedway YouTube channel and I'm delighted to say we're joined by our captain Danny King. Danny, first of all, how are you and how many of these have you done and are you sick of the word Zoom? <laughs> I'm very well, thanks Henry. It's nice to catch up, mate. Um, uh, I've done quite a few. I'm getting quite good with Zoom. We, uh, we do family things on Zoom, we do quizzes and uh, all sorts. We've sort of lived a life through Zoom this last year, haven't we? Yeah, I think you're better than me as well, because I use Microsoft Teams at work. So as as Danny knows, I've been trying to work out how to use Zoom. I'm one of the few that hasn't uh, become very proficient in it. But um, we're just going to take you back sort of through the, the last 18 months almost now to up until now by the end of the interview. But if you can remember sort of last March time, it, it, the season started with the, the Ben Fund and you and you won it, of course. And you must have been, you know, really looking forward to, to the season ahead back then yeah definitely I mean um, pre-season prep went well um, and obviously first meeting went fantastic everything was good but oh well, that Ben Fund meeting was a strange one because this uh, this so-called virus called Covid had just uh, had just hit and there was rumours of it coming to our shores and um, you know there was rumours that it might affect the season and um, it was right you know a week or so later we were shut down and the season was put on hold yeah I remember talking to you back then as well no one kind of obviously knew at all what the, what the impact was, was going to have on on everything and our whole lives but how was the uncertainty for you back then and you know that the season was delayed and there was new dates and then they were delayed but how was that from a sort of mental perspective trying to to get around your head around you know possibly not being able to do your job yeah well early on it wasn't a, a big problem because it was just uh, oh we're gonna we're gonna knock the season back a month um all right, fine, you know, we can deal with that. Um, and then another month went by and another month went by and then they sort of said, look, we're still looking at doing something. But at this this point, we were sort of well into July, August time. And um, and obviously that didn't happen either. So that was the point really where I realised that oh, we've lost the season here, you know, um, this isn't good. Um, you know, I can, every time it was just a month, it, it seemed okay. I can, I can manage another four weeks. Let's just, you know, keep fit and, and keep ready and, and just be ready to go when we get the phone call. But unfortunately, we never seem to get to that deadline. How did you deal with it? Because obviously this is your, your livelihood that you've done for as long as you can remember, I'm sure. And it must have been very difficult coming to terms with, all right, I'm not going to be able to do what I enjoy and earn money. Definitely. Um, you know, it was strange. It was a real, it's been a real roller coaster of a year. I mean, obviously the first part of the lockdown, everything was closed. Um, so that meant I was at home for 13 weeks with two kids and my wife being a teacher obviously was still working. So um the first few weeks were, were great, but uh, believe me, by the end of that 13 weeks, it was uh, <laughs> it had been very testing. But, um, you know, that's life. You know, that's what it is. I'm a, I'm a father and that's my job. And and it, and uh, it, we just made do, obviously. But by the time that finished and things started to get back to a little bit normal, obviously, this, at that point, the season wasn't happening. So I um, uh, freed me up, shall we say, to go and do some work. And luckily, one of my sponsors uh, sort of said, yeah, come and come and work with me. And um, and that's what I did. You uh, you fully embraced lockdown as well. I remember you showing off your your homemade haircut and also the uh, the funny online video you did. Of, I remember you in the garden playing football. Then it was homeschooling. So, and then there was the quizzes and stuff like that. So, you 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 at least sort of made the best of the situation, I guess, and had some fun with it. Yeah, that's the sort of person I am, Henry. Um, people, you know, you speak to anyone, that's just they'll tell you that's my nature and. Um, you know, there was a lot of doom and gloom around them. My wife sort of said, why don't we just make a video and, uh, you know, a bit of fun and maybe give something, give something for people to smile about and maybe take their mind off COVID. So that's what we did. And and it went down really well. It was a bit silly. It was very cheesy, but um, it was fun. And uh, I like to think it brought a smile to people's faces. Yeah, definitely. I oh, definitely found it amusing watching you uh, do all that. And um, everyone got into loads of series. Any series as you got on got into over the last year or so that you can recommend to anyone? Yeah. Um, I think I've completed Netflix, so that's good. <laughs> um, no, there's lots, you know. Um, quite enjoyed uh, Ozark. I really enjoyed Ozark. Um, yeah, I mean, the problem with with it is, is we've got about five or six series on the go at the same time, so it's uh, it's hard to go. But I, I must admit, before you ask, I'm, I am one of these people who's never seen a Line of Duty episode, so <laughs> I need to catch up. <laughs> I, I haven't seen an episode ever either, so we're uh, oh, not just me there. We're on the same page with that one. Um, at that time as well, there was a lot of uh, retro speedway meetings. I know you watched a couple of them. Looking back at, I remember one of them, you and Rory having a, a, a big crash and uh, you must have been, it's kind of enjoyed looking back at your younger days, I guess, as well. 
yeah, I call them my apprenticeship days. Um, <laughs> they, they were they were painful sometimes for sure, especially like with the the crash with Rory, which I always like to wind him up telling it was his fault, but um, <laughs> it was 100% my fault. But <laughs> we don't tell Rory that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, they were good days, and uh, it is fun to watch them back and see how far you've sort of come since then. And with work, obviously, you said you, you've been working with, with your sponsor. How did, what were you doing, basically? And how did you, you know, make it happen, basically? Yeah, well, obviously, um, as I said before, I'm very fortunate that he's a, he's a really good sponsor and a good friend of mine. Um, and uh, he, he just said, look, come, come, and, come and join us and we'll see how things go. And we just played it like that, you know, it was real laid back. And um, they do a lots and lots of different things. I mean, from sort of uh, landscaping to groundworks to driveways, patios, you know, it's, it's, it's a massive, um, massive variety of work uh, at RJ Warren. And um, it was good because obviously I, I've been a professional spiel rider all my life. So um, I, uh, I was basically a labourer, but um, they're a good bunch and they got me involved. And uh, to be fair, by the end of it, you know, I'd learnt a lot and um, I was enjoying it as well, which was nice. What was your your last normal job? Can you remember? Oh yeah, I um, I used to draw. Yeah, I worked in a um, like a factory driving a forklift when I was seventeen. <laughs> so yeah, a very long time ago. <laughs> a very long time ago. It yeah. must have been odd, you know, having a a a, a normal normal routine. I guess then, of, you know, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't just nine to five, but you know there was a day every day where you had to get up and work rather than you know going to the workshop or traveling to, to speedway or you know yeah it was quite funny when he told me they start at seven i said that's late he said no in the morning <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> who starts work at seven in the morning but they do <laughs> um no it was it was it was good you know i was i wasn't in a great place you know sort of then i just felt really down about life with with everything that was going on in the world with speedway and there was no the problem for me was there was no there was no target to work towards it's not like oh we're going to be starting in, in yeah in, or that month so i am um, i sort of just shut down a bit and thought i'll just take my mind off speedway and just knuckle down for a bit and uh get some work in and just try and get a normal day-to-day -day life without being so you know down in the dumps about things and, and that's what I did really I mean people would probably notice I was very quiet on social media you know I wasn't doing many interviews and it wasn't that it was a problem I just I just wanted to have a bit of a break from it all because you know it was it was tough times obviously money was getting tough now because I didn't earn any money and obviously riders they spend out a lot of money pre-season so I had all the equipment sat there but no you know no no um nothing to go and earn money with so it was difficult but I just knuckled down and um it was good it was good for me to get out and do some work yeah I think everyone feels the same with it in terms of having a target there was there was nothing sort of light at the end of the time I guess but you've kind of answered this next question as well I was, I was going to say you, you turned off from Speedway really and, and focused on on work and stuff but did you watch when when sport was gradually coming back obviously we had the, the Polish meetings on TV and the Grand Prix did you get into any of them or was it just you just took a total yeah. break from Speedway because I know yeah. from a, a, I, yeah, pretty much a total break. I mean, I did catch a few of the Grand Prix and things like that, but it it certainly wasn't like it used to be where I would, I would make sure I was in to watch it. You know, it was it was hard. It's it's even harder to watch Speedway when when they're racing and you're not, if you know what I mean. So um, yeah. yeah, you know, I I obviously kept my kept my eye on things and what was going on, but I just uh, yeah, I just um, wanted to ever forget about it for a while and and just knuckle down and work and and uh, you know, wish the months away, shall we say. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, kind of the same. The Polish meetings, I just I couldn't get into because it was it was back then. It was sort of a novelty behind closed door sport, and it just I just didn't feel the same. But the Grand Prix gave me my, my speedway fix, I guess, because we because we hadn't had any for so long. And for yourself as well, a lot of the other lads um, managed to get deals in Poland. Obviously, Nikolai was riding. Jason's been riding in Australia, but you didn't have any riding at all until you know the news of the british final which was originally going to be ipswich you know moved back and it was moved to bellevue um so how did you kind of approach that i know it, it's far from ideal there wasn't anything else they could do but it wasn't ideal preparation for you at all was it no um it wasn't but i, I was a lot of riders in the same boat so you know there's no excuses i mean um the only real real guys that were riding were the youngsters who had been riding all year which was great for them and um you know if, yeah I, I certainly wasn't the only one in that position but it wasn't easy and it was hard and it didn't feel the same you know it's so difficult when you've not been riding not been on the bike to be able to go and and compete at your best if that makes sense so um obviously I, I went for it and I did my best but it wasn't my night it was very wet and I started with three outside gates and I just didn't make the most of my first three heats and that was game over for me and how was it 
a lot of riders have got used to it now, but how was it riding without fans? Because sometimes riders say they don't hear anything when they're riding, they block it out. Others say you can hear it coming through your helmet, but how was it? Because surely, obviously it's an entertainment business, so you, you guys are there because you want to entertain the fans. So without them, how was it? It was strange. Um, you, yeah, obviously you certainly don't hear it when you're going around the track. So the actual race aspect of it was was no different, but um, you know that before and after the race and uh, when you're watching, the atmosphere wasn't there, which is um, which is a shame. But um, you know we were lucky that we got it on and we got a speedway meeting going, so we have to take the positive. Another thing you got into over, well, I guess it wasn't lockdown then, but the longest golf day challenge. Um, yourself, team manager Richie Hawkins. Cameron Heaps and the East Anglians, Mike Bacon. Uh, you raised, I think it was £1,240 for Macmillan Cancer Support. And I think the, the British final affected when you were going to do it as well, didn't it, because of the uh, the change in the dates. But I think it was Cam, Cam's idea, wasn't it, to do. And that must have been kind of really rewarding to, to do something good during a tough time for everyone as well. It was, yeah. And it's a typical idea of Cam's to do the longest golf day on the pretty much the shortest day of the year. So um, <laughs> it was certainly a, a challenge. Um, it's tough to get four rounds in, in in a full day, but we were pretty much running. And we teed <laughs> off in the dark with glow in the dark balls and it was dark when we finished. But you know what? It was for a great cause, Emery. Um, I've lost both my nans to cancer. So it was something close to my heart as well. And when Cam brought it up, that's, that's why I jumped at the chance. So um, it was a fantastic day and I'm really pleased with the money, money we raised in such a short amount of time. Is it going to be a part two then? I hope so, but I don't think anyone didn't plan anything at the minute with the with the hope that Speedway's coming back and we don't want no clashes. So. Yeah, and another thing you got involved with, I saw, was um, training days. I think it was at Leicester for the for the youngsters. Um, again, it must be kind of rewarding to to pass on your knowledge to them. And obviously in other sports, it's in football, you'd say, oh, after your careers, it's something you want to move into. I, I guess in speedway it's not as easy just saying I want to move into that because it's not as such a career as you know in football where you're training just a youth team but how, how do you find that and do you enjoy working with the children? I do I do they're they're really good and they're really enthusiastic about it I mean it could be the uh, the wettest day of the year and they still want to go and race speedway um, which is great and and that's the attitude you want when you're helping sort of these guys and um, I enjoy it. It's something I really enjoy helping others out. You know, it's just probably why I'm, I'm the captain as well. You know, it's the sort of person I am. If I can help someone, I always do. And um, yeah, for me to, to do a few training days was was fun. And I've actually got another one coming up in uh, early May. So I'm looking forward to that. And looking ahead now, of course, the, the season has a, has a start date in May. Um, you've, we've known that for a couple of months. So how, how was that um, with regards to obviously you're still working? Um, you want it obviously to stop working to prepare for the new season and, and, and getting back on the bike. You've been at a few, had a few training sessions, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. So work was a bit strange in the end. Um, the, the lockdown after Christmas um, was a little bit more tricky because um, my in-laws who normally help out with the childcare, they're quite elderly. And this new strain was at the time they were saying was five times more um, dangerous. So I straight away shut the, that, that, that path down because I did not want them to get you know that my kids are at school mixing with other kids if they're bringing a virus home I do not want my in-laws to get it so I ended up working uh, pretty much part-time I was so, still seven but till half two and then I was having to come home to get the kids um, which is fine you know again that's my job I'm a dad um, but it just meant obviously left working less hours which was well, that's the way it is I suppose but um, yeah so I did that until um, end of April so I basically took May um, sorry end of March so I took April off just to to get some training in, uh, get on the track, get bikes ready. And, and that's what I've been doing. I've just been, I've been training and I'm feeling good. It's, do you know, I hardly did any training back end of last year because as I say, there was nothing to work towards um, and that was difficult and it's hard to get motivated. Um, but obviously since now this is all happening, the motivation's back and it's been really nice just to get out there, go for a run, go for a bike ride, you know, whatever it may be in the gym. Um, and it does, it makes you feel better. And I've been on the bike four times already and I'm feeling great. I just can't wait to get going. How was it the the first time? Do you feel rusty or do you just do a lap and then it's like, oh, I remember how to do this? Yeah, I think the saying it's like riding a bike is very true. Um, yeah, I was a bit nervous, you know, been on a bike for a long time, but it's yeah. one of the things once you pull that helmet on and get on track, you just go for it. And yeah, it was there. It was um, it was normal. So it's, it's certainly probably been the longest time I've been off a bike. But um, yeah, that feeling when I got back on it was uh, something I've, I've surely missed. 
And one of the, the big changes in British Speedway this year is the Rising Star programme. Um, what do you make of the changes made in British Speedway over the winter? Yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I think it's good to, to be pushing the younger guys through. Um, you know, I'm all for that. Um, they are the future of our sport. So, um, it is, it is, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, they've had a lot of time off, I suppose, to try and think about things. And this is obviously, we've done something similar before, which um, maybe it didn't quite work the same, but this is a different way of doing it. And it involves all these these up and coming youngsters. So um, for, for a great British Speedway, it's definitely a win. With regards to the, the Witches team, obviously there's two changes from our, our planned team for last year, Jake, Allen and Nico Cavati, not traveling for, for COVID reasons, really. Um, Jordan Stewart and Anders Rowe in for those two. What do you make of those two changes? Obviously, a shame to not have Jake and, and Nico, who are much loved at Foxhall. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very close with a pair of them. Um, you know, I've known Nico since he started in England at Birmingham, probably back in 2012 or 13. And we've um, we've really hit it off, considering when he first started, he couldn't speak a word of English. So <laughs> we used to talk into our phones on Google Translate so we could communicate. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he'd come a long way and he's he was a real fan favourite. And um, Jake was the first year I rode with him last uh, last season, we rode, and um, we hit it off great. You know, he's, he's a great guy and I think he's going to be a fantastic rider in the future. And it's a shame that he's not back. But, you know, you got, you have to understand the, uh, the situation. And Jordan and, and Anders, how much do you know about them? So not a lot, really, I'll be honest. Um, I've met Jordy a few times um, and he's a lovely lad. He's real down to earth and I think he's got a lot of potential. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he's going to really step up and take... Uh, take the challenge with both hands so that'll be good and and as I must admit I don't know much about at all but again um up and coming rider and his scores you know in in uh, other leagues have, have shown what he's capable of so hopefully he'll do the same and uh you know being alongside Drew at reserve they'll bring the best out of each other and and the rest of the team what how do you how do you fancy your chances here obviously everyone's talking about Jason Crump returning to Speedway and a strong spearhead with yourself and Nikolai Clint as well yeah, I like the team. I do like the team. Um, it's very difficult to gauge um, with the way the teams are at the moment because there's, you know, some they've only just been completed, I suppose, and it's hard to sort of fare where everyone's going to be. But I feel we're going to be there or thereabouts. So um, I think Jason, you know, I kept an eye on him a little bit over the winter, and he was he was racing really well in Australia. So I know he's excited to get going, and I'm excited to see him get going. So um, and obviously Nikolai, you know, he's already riding, so that's a bonus for us. So. Yeah, come come May, um, if we can hit the ground running, I think we're gonna we're gonna have a good team. And Drew Kemp and Cameron Heaps, obviously two people you you know well, and it's 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 important in speed as well to have that core of people who know Ipswich Speedway, I guess as well. It is, and um, you know Cam, he's a bit like me. He's been involved with Ipswich Speedway for a long time, and um, I, you know I felt a bit sorry for Cam because he had a fantastic year in 2019, and it's a shame he couldn't keep that rolling over into 2020, obviously with COVID. But um, you know I'm, I'm confident that he's going to carry on that form, and uh, he's going to keep taking that next step up, and uh, that's exactly what we want. And with regards to the, the Premiership as a whole, obviously Swindon sitting out, so there's reduced teams to what there usually is. Um, what do you make of the rest of the teams and? Have you even looked at them? Are you, do you just focus on Ipswich? How do you see the season going? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've looked at them. Uh, I haven't studied them, I must admit, in detail, but I've looked at them and I roughly know who, who's where. And um, yeah, as I say, I think we have a good chance. I'm really pleased with our team and the way it's been built. Um, I think we have a, a great mixture of youth and experience. Um, and if we can make that work, then obviously that's going to be a bonus for us. Um, again, with the six teams, it is a shame, but can understand. Um, but I think that the main thing is that we do get going I don't think we can be too picky on how many teams and, and this and that. We have to get going and, and you know, and save save our sport and keep that going and, and, and try and rebuild, you know, bring it up and next year. Hopefully we can get back to some sort of normality. Obviously, the league has been affected by the, the news in Poland. Obviously, the restrictions on riders, you know, on how many countries they can, they can ride in and that's affected teams here. But what do you make of, of, of all that kind of situation where the... Obviously, Poland are the the top dogs in speedway. If, if you want, if you want to use that terms, but what do you make of the situation? It's it's a tricky one. I mean, it's not ideal, is it? But at the end of the day, if they're paying the sort of money they pay, and that's what they want their riders to do, then I suppose that's how they feel that they want to deal with it. Um, I don't think it's great, and I'm sure every rider wouldn't agree. But at the end of the day, that's that's the way it is. That's the way they've always been, and I can't see that changing. But positive news in in British speedway as well as the partnership with Eurosport who seem very much behind British Speedway and, and building the, the product if you want to use that term for, for the future and it was good to have them on board. 
it's fantastic. I mean, um, you know, such a, a great company. Um, we've been lucky over the years to work with many of these great companies and um, obviously a five-year deal with Eurosport now is uh, just going to hopefully push us further and further on and, and um, you know, keep promoting our great sport. And you're riding in the, the championship with Paul and their first season at that level for, for some time. Looking forward to that? I am very much so. Um, I said in an interview the other day, you know, I've been very lucky in my career to ride for some real big clubs in the country. Um, obviously, Ipswich, uh, Coventry, Peterborough and, and uh, now Paul. Um, it's been a funny old year, you know, I keep looking at my race suit and uh, keep thinking I'm going to get to put that skull and crossbones on and get to the tapes one day. And uh, it's getting nearer and nearer and uh, I'm certainly looking forward to the challenge. And in other news, I mentioned this because I know it's it's close to your heart and you've got good memories there but no Cardiff Grand Prix this season that's a that's a blow for for everyone isn't it because everyone enjoys that weekend in Speedway and I know I'm not sure how it would have worked this year obviously because the British final you usually get a place at Cardiff but I think the the British final was actually scheduled after Cardiff this season so I'm not sure how it would have worked with a wildcard spot but that's somewhere that you were always aiming to to get to isn't it it is, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's the um, it's the added bonus of it, I guess. Um, yeah, it's. I think it was probably always realistic that it wasn't going to happen. I mean, certainly with the way things are, um, I can understand that they're going to let crowd back into stadiums, but not at that capacity. I, I just can't see it. And obviously, if you can't have that capacity, I, I, I guess it's not financially uh, viable. So um, I feel any big stadium, I'm, I'm going to guess that um, same in Poland, they're going to have the same. So in Warsaw, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's very sad. Um, it is, but as I say, it's more important that we get our leagues going and uh, and get the clubs back up and running first before we look at the the bigger pitches. Yeah, and another good news story is was the news of season ticket holders donating three thousand seven hundred ninety seven pounds to the riders. This was um, this was people who had a season ticket but rolled it over to the new season were entitled to a refund because of the reduced fixture lists um, but they had the option to, to donate that refund to the supporters club um, to put towards the riders equipment for this season and um, you must be really grateful for for that support from the supporters. Absolutely I mean um, it just goes to show what sort of what sort of support we have at Ipswich and uh, what a fantastic gesture to do and I know that every single rider who's going to benefit from that is going to be so so grateful um, yeah, it, again, it's tricky times as well. You know, you'd, you'd expect these guys to go and get their refund in, in the current climate. But no, it just goes to show the passion for the sport. And and uh, we, we thank you all, definitely, 100%. And fast forward less than a month now, Kings Lynn away on the, on the first day of the season. Um, a long wait, obviously, to get back to tapes, a local derby. Um, how are you going to feel on, on, on race day? Nervous, uh, excited. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. I mean, it's going to be a lot of pressure. Um, I know that um, the rivalry between the two clubs is obviously big and that's never going to change. And, um, you know, it's a must win. Uh, but on the other hand, no one's been to the tape. So for us riders, it's going to be quite nervy. But I know that everyone's going to be up for the challenge for sure. And uh, I know we're definitely going to be going there to, to get the win. We're not going there just to make up the numbers. So um, it's going to be tough. And uh, obviously to start on a on a, a local derby is, is not ideal, but on the other hand, it probably is at the same time as well because they haven't had many, uh, many meetings on their own track. So maybe it's going to be the perfect time to strike. And finally for me, what are your ambitions for the season personally um, at this stage of your career? What, what do you sort of target every season? Um, so obviously uh, domestic leagues, I always target playoffs. I think, you know, obviously to win the league is going to be the best option ever, but um you have to be realistic and I think the first target is to get to them playoffs. So um, I'll be looking at playoffs for both teams. I'm really happy with both teams, as I've already said. Um, and on a personal note, obviously the British title. Um, I won another British title. I won it in 2016 and then I came second in, uh, was it 2018? And then obviously didn't go my way or 2019 didn't go my way. And yeah, after my injury, 2019 come second, I felt I should have won it that night, but it just wasn't, we didn't make a good start in the final. Um, and then I had a bad one last year, but you know, we, it's just the way it was. So um, I want to get going, get going good and uh, yeah, have another crack at the, another British title. Yeah, just to get racing, I think, is the um, the ambition for everyone this season. But um, thanks very much for, for joining us, Danny, and we'll see you at the tapes on the 17th of May. Look forward to it. Nice to catch up, Henry. <laughs>